The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman. You can see from the chart that I'm showing you right now on this Tuesday, the 12th of July. Look at this. Let me show you the one minute chart. It's just unbelievable kind of movements we've had in just a couple of hours. Look at this. Uh, here's the one minute chart. Uh, it, it comes from a low of 3820.75. Uh, 3820.75, that's right there, and uh, screams to peak A, B, C, D, and pulls back. Remember the chapter we've always looking for Ds. Pulls back again, starts all over at about 7.05 or 7, just after 7 o'clock. Actually, it was exactly 7.01. At 3825.50, goes peak A, B, C, D, E, F, and goes to a G. I'll turn it count G slash C, turns around. At um, 7.42, 38.44.75. <clears throat> of course, I'm talking about the ESU. Uh, this is the September E-mini, one-minute chart. Pulls back to where? The 200-period moving average, right? Except, bap, 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 hits it five times and takes off and goes peak A, B, C, D, E, F. Pulls back sharply. Starts another move, peak A, B, C, 1, C, 2. D E F, another F, right there at the high of the day, 740. And uh, that is at the high of 3876. So it goes up 50 points, just like that. And then it pulls back. But what does it do? It pulls back underneath the 200 period exponential moving average. Here comes the fight, the magnet of the 200. Does it become, does it become a holding pattern for a period? Does it become a repellent zone? Or does it become a propellant zone? And we'll know because if there's um, a close on a one-minute basis for two bars out of three under 38, 37, that's a problem. If there is a close above 38.53 for two out of three bars, that says we should continue up. Yeah, we come with the test. It's at 38.42. All right, let's get back to our story. It's more important that we look at the big part picture in the market. So a couple of things are happening here. Uh, in the in the general market, we'll start off with the Dow. I'd said in the uh, preamble, the update at 10 a.m. for the Tiger Financial News Network uh, market update, I'd said that the Dow had yesterday and today momentarily flipped positive with an, the pink nine-period moving average pushed over the 14-period, black 14-period moving average in the daily chart to go green. And if it holds green, if it holds green all the way for two sessions, that says, you know what? Finally, we've made a low that allows you to at least make an attempt to take out the candle of high of the 8th of uh, uh, July of 31,511. If it takes that out, we can, oh, and I should put here, I, I meant to change that in my daily um, update for my subscribers. This is actually Gray Peak A again. Gray peak B, and any move above 31,511 actually starts C. It doesn't have to go all the way to 38, 31,855, 31,885, um, or 6, let's say, to start leg C. This will start an, a new C because you've got from the low bar initiation of the buy signal that was momentarily at a buy mode, went back to just a buy signal. Um, you have to count your chapter wave obligations to count each successively higher peak and, and, and trough. And in this case, that becomes, that was a gray peak B. I'll just change the color since I'm talking about it. This is a gray peak A because it's underneath. It hasn't confirmed yet enough technical veracity to, to be upgraded to a buy mode. Uh, that we still have to wait. But at the same time, <clears throat> Uh, we are long, and we're still uh, anticipating that there's – I've been very disappointed, as I mentioned, even on Friday, that the action Friday was a doji candle, small plus sign. Uh, that's the way it looks. 
that was in great action. The selling was just, it just came in too often. It was too easy for the sellers to have a predominance, even though the buyers were there to hold it up. Same thing yesterday, sellers predominated. Same thing earlier this morning. And all of a sudden, now you're starting to see some kind of give back, some kind of uh, buyers are saying, ah, 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 ah. We are starting to see some bargains. That's the way the price looks. I would consider this to be a very bullish action until I see the Dow trading in the 31,700s. Oh, in between, you can do all sorts of things. But that would say to me, oh, finally you can test this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look at this, the green and pink narrow uh, channel. You're, you're ready to be trading above that to say, Changed course, 70% of the stochastic is not very good. It needs to be over 80%. On balance volume, not very good. It needs to be much higher than that. So this is all a process. And I'm talking about it as a process because, should I take some time now to do? Yeah, I'll just take time now. There's nothing to do. We're just waiting for prices to improve if they're going to improve. This is the moment that they should. So what we're looking at is within the context of what we're hearing either on the news or uh, in, in the financial shows, or there really is a mix now of some analysts saying we are so oversold that the, the, a, a, de a really decent low is in place and the Dow and the S&P and the Qs, even the IWM, should start to move to the upside. There are some people that say, uh-uh. It is so oversold under any measure that I've ever looked at, this is what I'm hearing, um, that huh, there's just no way that even if there is a, a sharp sell-off, there's just no way that we haven't made a substantial low that says there should be a really strong trigger for a move to the upside. Then there are a lot of people that say there is so much evidence of weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, overhanging You've got, let me just do this right now. As I'm speaking, I'll go to all these different areas. You've got crude oil, which happens to be down today, down six at 97.24. Um, person who was asking me about the SC, SCO the other day, and I said, yep, it's made a peak C, but it could be really choppy. I don't know how you can actually trade this without just closing your eyes saying, I'm long, and when I get to a leg D, I'll have to manage the trade because in the chat, we buy signal to buy mode. This is now in a buy mode. Uh, no, no, stochastic still at 54%. So it's, well, peak C. Unfortunately, to go to a buy mode as it crosses peak C to go to a leg D. Uh, but anyway, the SCO, which is the inversion of the, of the crude oil, price of crude oil, is showing a lot of strength and the weekly chart is actually improving. So when you put it into that context, crude oil, is still at a very high level. I mean, it's still in the 90s. Um, but if you look at the rectangle formation that I said, this suggests that we stuck in the rectangle because we broke more than halfway on the pullback. We couldn't even test the lows. That would be at the 80, uh, was that 86, I think it was? Let me go to this low here. The week of, yeah, the week of, uh, I did not show. Hello, anybody help? Yeah. The week, 87.37 was the week of the 15th of continuous contract. So it's still stuck in the range, but it might be headed down, but it's still at a very high level. I'll talk about that in relation to yields, and I'll talk about it in relation to commodities. Soon as we go, Dow's down up 44. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. As I was saying, crude oil uh, down seven now at uh, 96. All of this shit. I mean, look at the pipeline. Yes, I shares. Too many letters, I, shares, Dow, Jones, Transportation, Average, Index, Fund. Whew. Um, anyway, it's trading up 20 cents at 213.88. It had a high up in the 280s, double top, 281 area. Plunges down to the 205. I mean, that's a whopping decline for the transport, especially since you consider that the transports overall is really a measure of economic strength and that you've got Yes, you've got the airlines, uh, Jets, J-E-T-S, which has just been hammered. It's holding to 90 days, up 63 cents, up at 17.07. But in fact, uh, there's a whole other thing going on in the airlines. So I like to think of it more as the CSX, the uh, rails. And if you look at the rails at a low uh, taken out in the arch formation with the peak D high up in the 38s, Plunges down. Today's low is uh, 28.15. Whew, that's a, what, almost a 30% decline. Peak F in the monthly. So it's a real mixed picture. And I've said to subscribe to some opening call. What we're going to do is to try to be individualized. We're trying to uh, identify areas of strength, areas of weakness, and try to just put a limited amount of, built up a huge cash position, put a limited amount of money to work in order to um, at least benefit from any rally attempts to try to build up a kitty of cash. And that way we can look at um, putting a lot more money to work where we finally get some kind of a signal that says, you know what, that's the signal we're looking for to say, all, all's clear at least for a, a six to maybe even an eight week r rally in the market. I don't really see that at this particular point other than to say we've got to go step by step and actually if you look at it in terms of time uh, we have been uh, from the 17th of June here we are the uh, 12th of July we haven't even been in a month but we're off the lows but we really I said oh there it is L 
could be just an intraday thing. L's uh, flash. In the nine is now above the 14 period moving average in the daily chart. But the daily chart, you have to wait for the closing valve because it's you don't want to make uh, calls intraday unless you're using other techniques. And the 120 minute chart is improving, but that's not the point. The point is you have to wait till the end of the day. So within that context, I'm saying that there are now an increasing number of people that are saying the the impact of the global markets, uh, if you look at the housing sector, let's just go to the housing sector, HGX, and I'm doing this because so many people have asked me, could you just go through your thinking in terms of the overall, what, what should we do? We know what we're doing as subscribers, but what should we do um, in the big picture and what should we you know, at least telling our, our, our children, our parents, our, our friends, just in terms of, are the hopeful signs of is it so bad? Well, if I put it together, the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, has come off very nicely from its low. Peak A, peak B, peak C. And here we are finally in leg D. Peak C right there. And here we are in leg D. It's a fat... It's not clicking. There we are. Click, click, click. D. What's really nice about this is that it's touched the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart for the first time. Now, I'm hearing stories about housing. Of course, this is the time that you hear it. Interest rates have really popped to the upside. Uh, a lot of things are going on. Let me just put the picture into to, to the way I'm looking at it right now. This is a, an extremely difficult market in the sense that you could be right and you could be doing just absolutely fabulously um, looking at a particular stock or index or sector and you've picked the bottom and it's now way off the bottom and you can see 20% or even a 30% gain in some cases, sometimes even more. But that's after coming down 30, 40, 60, even 80% in some cases. So please consider that your cash is, is really important, number one. And number two, within the context, I, for my, my subscribers, I'm still looking at trying to have a whole, whole set of, of parameters that subscribers can look at. I have people from all walks of life, fund managers, people overseas, people in the, you know, everywhere, uh, people who, who, who can only put in a bid from when they get my newsletter at between 8 and 8.30, and then they're, they're off to work. They, they can't, they, they have to actually leave home and they're out. They can't do anything. So I have prices from single digits. I love that. We've got one single digit stock that's a really nice percentage. We're taking little bits off. Or we could have something like the dollar index. The dollar index, which is uh, trading right now at 108.17. We've had it since 2018. Since April of 2018, when the UUP, that's the dollar bull uh, eat, uh, fund, was trading, um, uh, we, we got in the 23s, and uh, we just took off another tiny little bit off. This is the first time in ages we've taken it off um, at, uh, what was the UUP? A UUP in leg D, we took off yesterday for a 22% gain. At 28.86, we're in from 23.62 um uh, way back, as I said, oh, uh, uh, should we retype that? Uh, way back in 2018. So DXY, I think that the dollar, and this is what I'm getting now. I want to put this all together. As I said, right at this moment, to be looking, we've got a, I've got a couple of questions about stocks. I'll get to them really soon. What I wanted to say is, look, the dollar has done the Chapman Wave one-to-one -one expansion, and that took it just a little bit above. That blue line went from that low back in uh, late March, so April, May, May um, to the high of 105.79, pulls back and then ha goes sideways. And then this big move up, it's got a one to one move, say 11 bars up. And this is, I think, the 10th or 11th bar. So this is exactly where I'm saying watch everything because the dollar, you could say it's overbought. But if it's the if it is the focus point, if it is where people want to go internationally, if the big globalists want to go into the dollar, I don't know, let's just say globalists, maybe there's other connotations. Um, if the global market wants to go into the dollar because of the currency of security, it has been for so long, 
you can talk about Fibonacci, you can talk about Chapel Wave, you can talk about volume, you can talk about anything you want. The, the price is rising because the tide is rising. Until that changes, we'll see what happens. So this little doji in a leg E says, all right, on a very short-term basis, maybe we're ready for a bit of a pullback leg D in the weekly, way above the previous highs, leg C in the monthly. I can't, I'm not going to change this now to an F slash C. It is a leg C. So what we're looking at here in the dollar index is that within the context of the big picture, we could have a pullback, but the dollar still seems to be the lead indicator. And if you look at the euro, look at this. The euro is making a little doji candle today. I had drawn in the cup formation potential in the weekly after the huge arch. Look at this huge arch. And it says somewhere around here at 1.005 at par. You might be stuck at par for a little bit, but you should be at least in the cap at 1.04 or something around there. So I'll be back because I want to also talk about the album. And so what are we doing in the I'll be back to all the DAOs up to the tank and this DAOs. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So how important was the one-minute E-mini S&P, a 200-period exponential moving average that was support, remember, back in 820 and then ran all the way from around about 38, 36, all the way to the high of the day of 38, 76, 50. Then it pulls back under the 200 period moving average and it tries to go above it. And now it's testing, 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 and it's sitting right at 38, 46. This is the, the 200 period moving average. It's been there in terms of number of bars since 10.01. And here we are at 10.30, so it's about 20, 27 bars. It's been hugging that line. That's how important some of these indicators are. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to practice or learn anything. You just put it in and watch it. And when it's up here, you just ignore it because the 9 and 14 period moving averages 
uh, most important. And look at this. The 9 went under the 14. It's pink, and it's been there since that turned down at uh, 9.55, around about 38.67. Uh, uh, and uh, it just a very momentary for one bar. It went green, then went back to pink. And now I think it's getting ready to test because we've done the testing of the, uh, the, the arch formation. Now it's getting ready. If there is a close above the arch high, in this case, it's the price of... 38, there we are, it's the price of 38.62, uh, no, no, 38.53.75. If there is a closing price above that more for more than two to three bars, but I, I would like to say that if it takes out the ugly candle of at 10 o'clock with a high of 38.57.75, that's going to be a big deal. And then I can draw in the the arch going to a cup formation. I'll just show you what it is right now. I'm not saying this is active, but I would like to think that it could be active. So I usually put this in and I say, there are always two fighting patterns. One is the cup and the arch is the other. And sometimes they can just fluctuate like a sine wave going arch, cup, arch, cup, arch. And now we're looking at the chance that it, uh, 38.52 down four. Uh, the uh, E-mini is finally, look at this, the MACD is improving, the stochastic is improving, on balance volume is improving, relative strength is improving, nine period has gone over the 14. Maybe instead of the rectangle formation, it actually breaks out, we'll see. But it's stuck in the meantime until it really does that. So I like to say, stuck in a rectangle formation a lot longer than your patience. Let's see if we can get out of that. So I'm showing you the overall picture. What is bad? What is, so the dollar hasn't shown any sign yet other than the chub wave notation to say just on a very short-term basis, leg E, possible doji candle today. Maybe it pulls back a little bit. If you look at gold, gold down uh, five at 1727. This W formation in the unbalanced volume with a stochastic at 7%, that's all very weak. The MACD, the histogram is still very, very weak. The 9 is way under the 14. It would take not just a reversal to the upside, uh, certainly a reversal in the dollar. Let's just exclude the dollar. I like to think of these things, try to think of them all as separate, separate beings. And in this case, if you're looking at uh, the daily gold contract at – down five now you see how small the little candles are over the last four sessions even though the dollar is making all-time highs so let's exclude that and say hey the dollar is the gold is actually showing that it's done the one-to-one -to, -one to the has it really done the one-to-one -one? i i thought i oh i think i might have done that with gdx let me just do that right now you see this pattern right here from the high at that peak e in the 1880s to the low of uh, just under 1800, I can draw in a a line that says to the downside, right there. Oh, the downside that it could says it could still go to the 1714 level, and here it is at 1726. So that would be one to one to the downside. Um, I'm not making predictions about this. I'm saying that's just a measured move in the chat wave arch formation. When you dreaded H, when you take out that left side low and then hold down below the left side low of importance, that was the one in May that was at, on the continuous contract at 1791.2. That's important. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time on this. There's a left side, right side price time match that says that by, oh, it's this week. By this week, the left side low of all the way back to last year, uh, August of last year of 1693 um, in the continuous contract this week, maybe next week, so within within a week of today, it could test the uh, 1700s. Uh, watching it very closely. All right, so that just says everything is different here because the gold, when you think about what the dollar has done, the gold is still held very well, but on its own chart formation, it's not a great pattern at all because that weekly chart broke underneath the January Falling Act support level. The the U that goes to a double U in the monthly chart is being challenged right now. Um, and I'll just do silver quickly because silver always has a slightly different pattern. Silver right now is silver. Uh, leg D to the downside. That's a good sign in the, in the notation, but that doesn't mean to say it has to have a ruddy from a, a, a trough D. 
But in the meantime, that's just a very poor, I, I said the monthly chart of continuous silver, it looks just terrible. So we've got that. If you, if you go to um, the TLT, look at this. This is bonds. A nice move up. $1.42, 115.86. That, that's fabulous action. Weekly chart. Did the one-to-one -one to the side, but then it went to a lower low. <clears throat> that makes the, a rally above the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart right there. It's imperative if you think that yields are going to go lower to really help the market together with 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 crude oil pulling back together with um, maybe the dollar pulls back a little bit at least temporarily and that allows the, the Johnson and Johnsons allows the multinationals to rally. These are all maybes and we don't know. So you have to look at the price. The price action says if the weekly chart on any weekly basis, if there is a touch of 121. And that's only uh, six points higher. That's a lot of points. But if it does that in the uh, iShares Treasury uh, Bond ETF, that's going to say, besides the fact that it is, it's the MACD has turned positive in the weekly. The stochastics come off a single-digit low. It's at 24%. That unbalanced volume is not particularly good. But there are some signs. The histogram's improving and that 0% line has turned positive. There are some signs in the weekly to say you could have a little bit more of a rally in bonds so yields can come down. Uh, wouldn't that be important? That'll help the housing market. And I just need to show you this if I can remember what I'm looking for. Oh, um, uh, TNX.X. This is the 10-year yield. Look. That yields made a peak F in the weekly chart, a peak D in the daily, a leg C, maybe a peak C in the monthly 10-year treasury note. Well, that just says that it's 29.24, 24 2.94%, 2.924%. Um, it is below what was uh, a high, and I usually I don't like to type it in because I always have to change it because this is a continuous contract, 34.83, 3.483. And now at 2.294, that is a, that is much better, all right? It's not great, but it's much better. If you look at wood, which is the iShares uh, Global Timber and Forestry ETF, that is a heck of a move down. But if you look at the monthly chart, it's not bad after the massive move from under 40 to uh, just under 100. And now it's trading a 74, 25% pullback. But that goes together with high-grade copper. And high-grade copper, another international monetary uh, an economic benchmark is trading down today, down 3.31. So what I'm saying is that there is such a mixed market that for subscribers, I'm trying my best to get us into just positions that have the chance to defy any uh, general me market weakness and move higher. And that's the way we're doing it right now before we get aggressive. I don't want to get aggressive until I feel a lot more secure. Dow's up. Uh, 69 and the S&P is down 5. Yeah, that's a divergence that we've seen all the time. Now I go, I'm going to go to the questions. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So it's all about Square. Square formerly, uh, now it's now blocking, formerly squaring. Point of sale, soft pay to uh, manage receipts, paid a, a high of 289 back in August, and it really took a little bit of a dive, and it went down to the 70, I think, well, let's see, well, 70, 56.01 was the low on the 17th. I think there was a 7 there. <laughs> so 56.01, oh, my God, 56. All right. So 56.01, Mr. Round number low. What was that, 01? Anyway. The pattern that I said, uh, the question was, where is support? So the question really is, in my uh, my techniques, I use three basic patterns, straight up, straight down, cup formation, arch formation, a mix of the two. This is one and three, where it pulls back sharply, makes an arch formation, fails at a peak A or a B, and then it comes down, takes out the left side low and goes much lower. Uh, but sometimes if it holds the left side low, it can make another arch formation. So it looks like a lowercase h going to a lowercase m. Well, lo and behold, and then what I said when I typed into the den, what, what I was looking at, I was saying, once it forms the h pattern, if it holds the left side low and then makes another arch, until it takes out decisively the arch high, in this case it would be up into the 72, 73 area, this is important because it's in its own momentum. It might not even, it might not even uh, do what the market's doing. It's just in its own uh, turmoil. It's trying to figure out what the heck to do now. I've been, you know, such a huge move down, sharp move down, makes the dreaded H to peak C, becomes C minus because it plunges below the left side low in about the 65 area, goes down to 56. Uh, and now it's trying to rally. It's rally to the 70s. That's a good percentage move, but then it pulled back, and now it's trying to rally again. So just think of this, and the key thing is, yes, correct. Where is the key support? I said uh, 62s, but actually on a purely technical basis, based on the Chapman Wave me methodology, this low that was made on the 30th of June of 59.08, you take that out, and then there's a really good chance you're going to test the 56 level. So it's really important on a very short-term basis today, so 63.30, and I would say the 62 is just near-term. But think of it in its own, own, it's done with the chaos. Now it's trying to resolve that. So the upside momentum showed some trigger of support, and even now it's support, but support's not good enough. You want it to be able to explode to the upside. That's the most important thing about support. I've seen what we have a stock today that we picked, uh, not a, a stock, an ETF, that we picked up because it was doing so well during the turmoil. And I, I said to myself, there's a chance. I'm looking at a lot of, it's in the biotech area, but we've looked, looked at a lot of biotechs that have done fabulously, but the pullback that they've had from any pullback in the last two days has been, for some of them, quite severe. Most importantly is that this particular uh, issue that we've got, 
the momentum of the entire in, I've got the generic in other words I've got all of these these uh, these uh, these biotechs in this particular area and that says yes it could pull back today if there's strength elsewhere but within three days it should find its upside momentum again that's the way I'm playing these things so we we got I said yesterday spied on a dip we didn't get the dip uh, well, it did, but it didn't get to our price. And today we got our price. And that's all you can do. You do your homework and we now we'll see what happens. So the same thing here. So my point being that unless Block Inc., formerly Square, trading at uh, 64.40 right now, dollar twenty two, unless it finds its own momentum to break from this, the sideways consol consolidation in a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. That's what you're looking for. You want upside momentum to be, be, re, re, be in, reinstituted. The MACD is good. Stochastic's okay at 60%. You want the stochastic to get to 75% and then quickly to 82%. And you will see Square really move to the upside. Until then, it's just kind of stuck. So I think momentum is really the issue here in terms of a position you might be having, or in your case, you're going to be using out of the money uh, puts. Oh, for Friday. Ooh, I didn't see the for Friday. That's just three days. You see, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. Um, well, you do your homework because, you know, you just asked me where the support is and the support is in the 60, 62s. Okay, where's the breakout on a, a very short-term basis? That's really what you want to know. And the breakout is, look at this, in the 120-minute chart, peak A, peak B, peak C, P, D, it's pullback. Your objective in the chart wave is a buy mode. Takes you to at least a peak D. The last one is peak A, B, C, D. It went to an E. So you to get to at least a D. And, and then you can see a sharp pullback. Well, we got that. And now you've got your D and your sharp pullback. So you want to see by Tuesday afternoon, by Wednesday at this time during the show, you want to see Square trading at about 65.85 to 66.35. If it does that and it can hold to, into the close, say tomorrow, preferably today, but let's just say tomorrow, that says by Friday you could have a, a test of the 70 level. So that's the way I'd look at it. I hope that helped you. Next question came up. I'm not sure, Zander, if that's, uh, oh, that's for at Tommy. All right. Well, I, it, it says Apple because you, three people have asked for Apple, so I'm going to put Apple in here. Look, Apple is in a leg C to the upside. It's had a really nice bounce off the chart wave inside uh, track support level in the weekly chart. The MACD is improving, but it hasn't crossed positive in the weekly. The stochastic's improving, but it's only at 25%. On balance, the volume is really terrible in the weekly, but fabulous in the, in the daily. So I'm suggesting to you that this is B right here. That is C, usually in a buy mode, and it has to be a buy mode because 93% in the stochastic is fabulous, and MACD strong is fabulous, and I'm period over the 14 is fabulous, that if Apple... In the next two sessions, that's not today, I'm saying Wednesday and Thursday, if it's able to touch 150 strike price, it's at 146.85. If it just, no, even 149, if it can even touch 149, that's going to be a really good sign, especially if it's still in leg C. But your big hazardous uh, resistance level is in the uh, 151 to uh, 150 to 151 area where the high on the 1st of June was 151.74. If at any point it gets to 150.80, the 152.65, 200 period exponential moving average will become a magnet. It's been repelled before. It hasn't got there. But the second time around, as it gets closer and closer, the more you go from repellent to magnet in the 200 period moving average. And that's also the 14 period moving average. Right now it's touching. So this is so far saying Apple, this is a pretty decent move. And when you think Apple was at 182 back in January and the low was 129, that's a 60 point decline. That's a pretty decent decline. But if you look at the monthly chart, it's not a bad pattern at all. So Apple's holding much better than uh, many of the others. A XLK was mentioned as a, an indicator. See, the XLK is doing the same thing as many of the stocks, the same as what the Square 
It made that peak eight pull back. It's the same as the Dow. Everything's everything needs a break above the high that was made in late June. And if if the XLK can trade into the 134, 135 area in the next two, three, two by Friday, that would be really good action. That's a big ask. I'll be back. The Dow's up 49. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So remember, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. There we are. We're in the rectangle. It looked like it was going to break, but it went to a peak C1, C2 in the E mini uh, right there. Uh, if I can do this quickly, let me just get that. Okay. Yeah. So what we're looking at is that within the context of the patterns we're looking at, just let me make it real clear that going into, I've got a couple of questions that I'll get to in a moment. Uh, if the E-mini at any point starts to trade in the 3868 area for more than 10 minutes, it's, oh, high, 368 or higher, then the high of the day of 3876 becomes a target. If it starts to trade under 3838 for 10 minutes or more, the upside has a real problem. My thinking right now is that we've got just too much ease with which the market is being pushed higher and pushed lower. That's that's just a, an indication of tremendous uncertainty. Those are the prices. Rather than the market tell you, Queb, a question that came in, the, the iShares, China Internet ETF. Yeah, remember the cup formation can go to an arch formation, and now it's on its way to test the lows, which will be in the 30, uh, 29s, and it's at 30.09. So until it resolves that, it's just kind of stuck. Let me just do this. Uh, I, I think it was 
question came in. Uh, do we go seven? Let's see. Yeah, I think that this is kind of a holding pattern for now, but my bias is looking at the upside just because the individual uh, the particulars that I'm focusing on. And as I said, the, the uh, daily chart has just gone L, which means that the nine has finally gone above the 14 uh, period moving average, first time since about June the 6th or so, when it broke down up in the 30, almost, uh, what, 32,800s. Uh, so this is a good sign, but the day's young. We're not even an hour and a half into the session. Make sure what you want to see is the Dow is holding a plus 135 or more after 2 o'clock, and that'll be a good sign, not a plus 40 or minus 50. You want to strength, and that'll help the general market. So uh, hope you have a wonderful day. I'll be back in a later on for an interview. But stay tuned for Larry, uh, Nicholas Firm, uh, Steve Rose, Dan.